Hello guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing TT Isle of Man 3 Ride on the Edge and today I want to show you my controller overlay and hopefully give you guys some tips and tricks and some pointers to improve your riding in TT3. Now I am using the DualSense controller but I have put the PS4 controller overlay on because I think it's just a better overlay, it's easier to read the controller and it's better to see the inputs this way so I'm sticking with the PS4 controller's overlay but I am using the PS5 controller. Bear in mind a lot of things I'm going to be showing you and talking about today can be used regardless of what controller but I would say that if you are unlucky enough to be using keyboard then I don't think any of these tips and tricks will be helping you here today. So, without further ado, let's get into my controls and let me give you some pointers of what I use to make the riding better for me and which could potentially work well for you. And of course guys, if you do enjoy the content, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button because I've got a lot more guides and videos coming up very, very soon on TT3. So here we are now at my control settings. Everything listed here will be the Xbox button prompts, but I'll give you the PlayStation versions as you'll be able to see in the video. So everything is normal for the front brake and acceleration. Rear brake is now moved over to square or X on the Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. Tuck in is moved from the left analog stick forward to the X button or A button. Shift up is triangle or Y. Shift down is R1 or RB and everything else is pretty much to your liking. You choose however you want to use them if you want to follow this guide. Now the big thing for me which really changed my experience with TT3 is the controls for the triggers. I moved the sensitivity down to minus 10 and changed the rescale to on. I found this gave me a lot more of a gradual press rather than quite the abrupt press that I was originally having. So if you're finding you're quite aggressive with the acceleration, with the brakes, consider lowering the sensitivity down to minus 10, maybe even minus 5. Works well for me to go minus 10 and also change the button there that says rescale from off to on. Now don't get me wrong guys, these are my tips and tricks that work for me. This may or may not work for you, so I would suggest you spend time and tweak it to your liking. But let's get back on the track and let's see how this comes together because I want to just give you one pointer. We are learning the game and if you are learning the game, you're not a seasoned veteran. First thing I would recommend is trying out semi-automatic gears. Now you can consider doing all the gears yourself there's not a problem for that but I find the best feeling and rhythm I got for myself was going for the ride 4 controls that I use now for ride 4 I use the X button as the tuck in and I've followed it on here with TT3 now there's something I want, very very important I want you to mention here or at least I want you to pay attention to and that is the left analog stick I will push this analog stick in the direction where everything is going I'm not pushing right and left to move right and left. I'm following the track with the analog sticks. The only other time the analog stick will go backwards is when I want to push the rider's weight into the back of the seat, therefore helping me slow down and keep the weight planted on the rear wheel rather than going endo and stopping straight over the front. So with a nice smooth gradual movement on the acceleration it's easier to push the left analog stick upwards and gently move it rather than just moving a half analog stick movement. So a lot of the time I'm pushing forwards in analog stick, it's not changing the rider's weight because the rider's weight is now assigned to the X button. So using the X button sparingly and when the rider is straight, it gives, gives me a lot more speed and keeps the front end down going into some of the tighter and tougher corners. Now of course, with the acceleration as mentioned earlier, I have changed the sensitivity. The PS5 controller on PC has an annoying bug which half of the controller's trigger doesn't actually respond. So I'm still going quite heavy handed with the right trigger. But if I move back over to my PS4 controller, I probably wouldn't have that issue. But keeping the X button pressed in for the tuck in, it keeps the rider's weight nice and tight behind the bubble, helps reduce drag on the straights. Now going into some of the difficult corners, braking, very difficult to do. So there's a lot of it is a half brake. You'll see that the brake never really reaches its maximum press. The only time that'll happen if it's for an extremely difficult braking marker. So up here to the left hand side now, I will give a little bit of front brake, almost reaching full, and then release and gradually let go into some of these corners. Now a little bit of a tip and trick as well which I've found out which helps me a lot, is when going into a corner and you think you might be going a little bit too hot, just press the front brake ever so slightly. Just enough to slow enough speed down so you can still move into the left hand side or right hand side regarding of the corner. 
Now you won't lock the brakes here in TT3, so you can press it quite firm, but if you're carrying a lot of lean angle, then do not press the front brake. Only if you're carrying a lot of speed and you can afford to go quite wide into the corner. Prime example is here, going to give it some nice braking into the right hand side, and as we line the bike up, a little bit more brake just to slow the speed down. Of course you can achieve that as well by reducing the acceleration, but just hitting the brake just takes enough speed off without worrying too much about the right trigger. Now if you're struggling to start without wheeling the bike, let go of the acceleration before the green light pops on. And keep the revs low. You're right there on cue, got a nice decent enough start. Wasn't as good as Pete Hickman's, but it was still pretty decent nonetheless. I'm going to do that into more detail in a future video, but if you're wondering now how to start quite effectively, that's one way to tackle. Now, another thing to mention is the corners themselves. I mentioned briefly about braking into corners, and it is vital that you don't hit the brakes too hard when you've got a lot of lean angle. This game doesn't like you trail braking a lot. So if I was you, avoid trail braking as much as you can and get, make sure you brake well and early before the corner to ensure that that won't be a problem. Now, regarding the rear brake, in the likes of MotoGP and the Milestone games, I use the rear brake a hell of a lot. The only time I would suggest using the rear brake here in TT Alaman 3 is on a straight line brake. I find that if you try and use it anywhere else, the rear wheel will just kick out and it will have a big issue. So going into a braking mark like this could effectively use the rear brake. Didn't bother with it too much this time around. I'm not finding I'm using the rear brake as much as I thought I would. But simply, it is there to use if you want it. Mine is set at square, as you know. So just bear that in mind. Another couple of things to mention that I did touch base on the automatic gears. Now, I am running semi-automatic, so I'm actually downshifting myself and allowing the game to handle the upshifts by itself. It can do that automatically, as far as I'm concerned. Now, the biggest point I want you to take away from this experience is that there's no rush to go into manual gears. Of course, manual gears always feels more exciting and it's, it's better to do, but if you're learning the tracks, then you need to start there. Learn the tracks and then incorporate lower electronics, higher gear ratios, changes of settings, and even manual gears. But of course, if you're a masochist or you want that ultimate experience, then you can go for manual gears. But what I would consider if you do that, change triangle to L1, or maybe move the tuck-in back over to the left analog stick. It may not work too well, if you're still wanting to use the upshift as triangle because you're pos positioning your thumb in a rather odd spot. So you could try changing it to circle or maybe even square. That is entirely up to you. I'm just giving you what works well for me. But regarding the semi-automatic, you aren't losing much time, to be quite honest with you. The game handles the upshifts quite well in automatic. It goes quite high in the revs. So just bear that in mind that if you don't want that extra stress and pressure, there's no reason you can't use semi-automatic or even fully automatic. It's entirely up to you. But those are my controls. Good couple of points and tips for you. I do hope this video has helped. Of course, if it has, let me know in the comments section down below and be sure to subscribe. Final few things just to mention as well. The bikes I used in this video were not upgraded. They're all stock. I did find that the more you upgrade the bikes, the easier they become. So if you are really, really struggling, consider upgrading the bikes. And finally, tweak the electronics. If you don't think you're ready for that step yet, then take your time with it. But honestly, I found by reducing the electronics, I actually went quicker. And not just quicker, more comfortably. And I want to stress that so much in this video, that if you're just struggling to play the game, then don't concern yourselves with changing things to become quicker. Just learn the game and improve. That's all that really matters. And I guess, guys, that's it from me. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the controller overlay. If you want any more videos like this, just let me know because I'm more than happy to cover more guides, tips, and tricks for TT Isle of Man 3. So, guys, thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure. Don't forget to consider subscribing and leaving me a comment down below. Hit the like button and also consider becoming a member of the Dots Race Pit Crew. Thanks for watching and ciao for now. Oh hi! Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.